What's going on friends and family? My name is Skylint and today we're going to be talking about my pick for my favorite upcoming top 10 pixel art games of 2017 and onward. So this list includes games that have yet to release as of uploading this video, but some of them have demos, some of them are early access, and I've had fun with them, but for the rest and mostly all of it, it's kind of just dumb hype. I think the games just look good, and that's the point of the top 10 there. Top 10 pixel art games. This is games that have a focus on the artistry of the pixel art. If you guys can appreciate that and see what these games are trying to do and trying to break boundaries while staying in their relatively boxy dimensions, then I think we both will have a good time. All right, player two, let's ready up and let's hit continue. All right, let's talk about a game called CrossCode. Starting out our list is one of the most hyperactive and in-depth action RPGs that I've ever seen. And I really mean that. I think it's really the best of both worlds with the formula. Action RPG, I think it's action, is nearly uncontested in terms of intensity. If we actually had to directly compare it to something that was on last year's list, such as Hyper Light Drifter, no, I think CrossCode's actually a little bit more hyperactive and has a little bit more range with what you can actually do in terms of the action. But also the RPG it has so much story and a big focus on story. A lot of text, a lot of reading, and a lot of characters, but they have character. So this game, as a real, like, full title, this really feels like it's got a lot of meat to it. It's got a story to tell. And there's a game to be gamed. I played the demo, I thought it was neat, and I think you should too. And if you want to check it out, you can also buy an early access right now. Next up on the list, we have a game called Wargroove. This is going to be coming out for the Nintendo Switch. And Wargroove is a turn-based strategy game for four players, in which each player takes control of an army and its commander unit to wage war on their enemies. Wargroove is an extremely easy to pick up and accessible game. At the forefront of its design, that's the point, to just jump in and go. And it's, it's supposed to apparently be difficult to master, so they say. Hopefully, that actually turns out true. But from what I've seen, maybe so, actually. And you also have to keep in mind that the game has a campaign and, like, map editor, so I'm really excited to see that. So generally, tactics games tended to have been very uh, engrossing, true, but kind of hard to get into. However, with Advanced Wars, the obvious inspiration of Wargroove, that was changed. And so now Wargroove is coming out as essentially a spiritual successor with a fantasy medieval styling. And hey, I'm hyped for that. Let's talk about a game called Chasm. So Chasm was supposed to come in 2015. It didn't. It looks like the developers, it was kickstarted a little bit over their heads, but that's okay. They want to make the biggest, best game possible, and that's how it looks like it's turning out. So apparently you're going to be exploring the depths below a remote mountain town in a procedurally generated adventure platformer. Taking inspiration from hack and slash dungeon crawlers and Metroidvania style platformers, Chasm is apparently going to immerse us in a fantasy world full of exciting treasure, loots, deadly enemies, enemies and abundant secrets. It's looking good so far. Let's just get the game in our hands to find out for sure. Next game on our list is Children of Morta. This actually made last year's list. It hasn't yet come out, probably because it's a very hard task to tackle. This is a game that had my eye caught for a long time because it's a roguelite title. So it's like an action RPG with procedural generated, you know, elements. But unlike pretty much every other one in existence, this one is narrative driven. So it's a hack and slash, but it's also very story based, which is super hard to do with all the random procedural generation that's going to be uh, in place in this game. So Apparently, you're going to take on the role of a member of the Bergson family, which is a guardian of Mount Morta, as you fight desperately against something called the Corruption. It looks kind of dark and kind of charming, actually. But I just want to express my gratitude towards games that use pixel art as expression for their characters. So a game that's character and narrative driven like this, oh boy, but still retaining the rogue light hack and slash procedural generation well, with all this game that it's supposed to offer. I think you can see why I made the list. Moving on through the list, we have a game called Eater, another repeat from last year. This is a game that I thought would come out sooner. Man, I really hope it would because I love anything Souls-like. I've already played all the other Souls-like, like Dark Mouse, you know, stuff like that, and a lot of other pixel art games, but Eater's the, the one I really, really wanted to get into because it seems so true to, like, the real heart of what makes Dark Souls dark. And Eater's got that, but I don't got Eater, so that's tragic. Anyways, a lot of other Souls, and you know, Souls-like and Dark Souls-specific YouTubers I've already been talking about this or maybe even played demos and yeah, I just I just kind of want to play it too. But basically it's an isometric pixel Dark Souls. I don't know how to express it any other way. I don't think the genre is really saturated. I want more Dark Souls. So yeah, that's basically why it's on the list. If you can't dig it, I don't know what to say. 
Now halfway on our list, we have a game called Death's Gambit. This title wows me, I think, in a lot of different ways. So in some ways, it's very reminiscent of older side-scroller action RPGs, and in a lot of ways, it's very new and so big and, and just, wow, just like bombastic, kind of? I mean, it's, it's a little bit more dark and slower paced, absolutely, but there's some, like, literal giant monsters that you're gonna be scaling, actually, so kind of some Shadow of the Colossus. Mix that in with Alter Beast, a little bit Dark Souls, and I think you got this concoction. Death's Gambit looks challenging. It looks weird. It looks special. And I'm all about playing unique games for unique experiences. And it's really not too often, especially in 2D games, where you get a sense of scale and literally scaling things and actually traversing the land like you do in this game. I gotta play this. Number four is Dead Cells. Dead Cells is gonna be a rogue, light, metroidvania action platformer. You're gonna be exploring a sprawling, ever-changing castle, assuming you're able to fight your way past its keepers in 2D Souls light combat. No checkpoints. Kill, die, learn, repeat. Or, you know, that's what it says on the Steam page, but you know what else that says? Overwhelmingly positive reviews. This is one of those super early access games that is just a winning formula. One which, of course, we're seeing, you know, repeated on this list and a bunch of other games as well. But it's just done correctly. And it's a nice combination of things that I've been gushing about in a lot of different titles already in this video. And it just kind of has all of them. Yeah, just kind of a bunch, a number of winning formulas thrown in and apparently executed to a winning degree. All right, guys, number three on our list is a game called Fight Night. Now, this is somewhat kind of breaking the rules because it's a pseudo 3D game. And I know it looks very, very 3D, but it actually, if, if it looks to me kind of like Doom, and if you know Doom, like really know it, it's actually a 2D game, it's complicated. But anyways, Fight Night still regardless, even if it is just like, you know, playing tricks, you know, trying to make it look 3D, or if it is 3D and trying to make itself look 2D, I don't know, whatever. In the end, there, it looks like there are 2D sprites that do use pixel art work and very very much in the styling of pixel art and that's why I really wanted to put this game on the list because very much you know wh whatever way it's actually trying to commit and execute itself as an art piece it still to me is an artistic expression that is reminiscent and I think celebrating pixel art retro games retro gaming and the gaming community as a whole it's beautiful Anyways, you play as a knight who punches stuff. It's a punching RPG. It's not quite a first person shooter, but it's a punching freaking dungeon crawler. Maybe think something like back in the day, the original Elder Scrolls, stuff like that. But you, you know, one punch. Next up on the list at number two, we have a game called Blasphemous. Now, if you haven't seen it, I suggest you go watch my pre-impressions video where I go over all the details on its Kickstarter page, which by the way, fully funded, overfunded, it's gonna have a lot of awesome mechanics. And the game is coming out in March, 2019. So we got a little bit of ways to go, but there's a lot being added to this game. But let's talk about the main things, okay? You're already seeing your eyeballs are being filled with the absolute metal art that this game has. Pixel art is gorgeous. The stills, awesome, fantastic animations, pretty freaking perfect, okay? I cannot really contend with it but Blasphemous is, I mean, you see it right now too, right? The general aesthetic, it's dark, it's morbid, sure, and it's metal, but it's weird, okay? Look at these uniquities. Look at these subtleties. Look at this. Like, it's just, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Blasphemous is definitely one of the most weird and most intriguing titles I've ever seen in my life. I want to play it just to explore the world, and that's actually a very interesting mechanic of the game. See, it doesn't have too many weird gimmicks. It just seems like it's really kind of just head-on tackling the Metroidvania genre, but really interestingly, it doesn't proclaim itself as just generally a metroidvania. It first says blasphemous, a dark and brutal 2D non-linear platformer. You want to know why? Because metroidvanias generally are a sort of non-linear. A little bit of exploration, a little bit of creativity with your pathing, but blasphemous is going to one-up it. And generally with most other mechanics, this is going to be a one-up with completely non-linearity. Its darkness is a little bit darker. It's a little bit more brutal. Its action is a little bit more intense, a little bit more potent. Of course, it's an upcoming game. It's a Kickstarter game, so we don't know for sure sure, but oh man, dude, what this game is promising. <sighs> kind of looks promising. Finally, we're at number one. That game is The Last Night. This title, more than any on this list, I feel is really art in motion. This is art you play. 
And I think that's really how it's sort of envisioned because its vision is very particular. It's very poignant and it's the point. The Last Night, it has the soul of a cinematic platformer with the heart of a sci-fi thriller. The Last Night is set in a post cyberpunk world with a deep and vibrant vision of the future. And that's how it self claims itself on Steam. And if you see the gameplay here, you can kind of tell that it's a little bit cheating for this list because it's mixed media. But in my opinion, more than anything, because it is mixed media, it actually kind of promotes and it makes it stand out the pixel art. It actually shows that and throws that and uses that as sort of part of its vision that the cyberpunkness, the noise, uh, the visual clutter, the mess sometimes. Mixing media like this for a purpose like this, for a vision like this, is in my opinion very punk and in that kind of poetic obviously artistic. So I'm not sure really what this world has in store for me as a story, as a gameplay, but I know that it looks freaking good. Some stills from this trailer straight up would look amazing on my wall as a poster. So in a top 10 like this, honestly, I couldn't think of any other number one. But that's it for the list, guys. Thanks for watching. I had fun putting it together, and I actually have had fun, you know, looking at these games and playing a lot of them. And hopefully in the end, we're all going to have a good time playing all of these games. I mean, we could dream. Absolutely. But if there's a game that I miss or I didn't mention, I don't know, and you want to give a shout out, that's what the comments are for, baby. Please join us down there. These top 10s are kind of like community events. But if you do want to support the community, I'm going to welcome it. The Patreon, donations, all that good stuff. Thumbs up. And obviously, you watching the videos, sharing them, and commenting, and just being a part of the community absolutely every day helps. So thanks guys for letting me do this, for trying out new games, finding new games, and having fun and playing with you. All right guys, keep the hype alive, and I'll see you again next time.